producer, Ken Adams of Synergy Theater. We're members of our company. Um, and we'll talk more about our theater companies in a moment. Uh, but first, I just want to say welcome. Welcome, everyone. We're so glad uh, that you're here. Uh, this is how Right Away is going to work. Um, we have five playwrights tonight, and we're going to give them 45 minutes to write a brand new spank and play during the show based on suggestions from you folks in the audience. And um, we're going to um, find out what can happen in a mere 45 minutes. While they're doing that, we're going to stare blankly into the camera and wait. No, that is not at all what we're going to do. While That's not it. <laughs> because that would be not so interesting. What we're going to do while they are off writing, everyone who's here in the Zoom where that is happening uh, is invited to play improv writing games with you, Laura, and me. And mm -hmm. so they will want, the people who are here are going to want paper and pen or pencil. And after 45 minutes, the playwrights will return and present the world premiere of their works. Yes. Uh, People who are watching on YouTube or Facebook could also play along with our activities if they want to, of course. Yes, um, and we do want you to know that if you are um, participating with us on Zoom, that you are visible on the old worldwide interweb. Uh, we have, uh, uh, as Katja said, uh, we are on uh, YouTube and we are on Facebook. Um, now, here's a couple of things that uh, if you've not done Zoom before, um, you might want to know. One is uh, that we will um, be asking you sometimes to have your camera on if you're participating in Zoom or have your microphone on or off. And those are down if you uh, hover your cursor down on the uh, lower left hand corner, you can see that. Um, I see that all of you do and it's helpful uh, if you go uh, to the video camera down there and go to the little carrot to the right of it and it says uh, hide video participants. That really helps on how, you, um, on how we will all see the show. Um, if you hover your cursor up in the uh, right upper corner, you will see options on how you view uh, the show. Uh, you have speaker view or gallery view, and that is totally up to you. That does not affect how other people see the show. So whichever way you want to do that is absolutely A-OK. -okay. Um, also, down, back down at the bottom of your screen, if you hover your cursor towards the middle, you'll see a, a something called chat. And we will ask you soon to turn that on because that's how we're going to get suggestions from the audience members. All right, is it time to introduce our playwrights? I believe it is. Why don't we do that? We have five of them. Um, let's get on our co-producer from Synergy Theater. Uh, Synergy Theater's artistic director, Ken Adams. Hello, Ken. Um, I think uh, the really amazing thing about Ken Adams, besides the fact that uh, I be, we began improvising together, he and I, at uh, Theater Sports New York, which became Freestyle Rep, uh, over 30 years ago, which is stunning to me, is that he, in addition to being the artistic director of Synergy Theater, he wrote the book, How to Improvise a Full-Length Play, The Art of Spontaneous Theater, which we reference and... Uh, and Cats Company references, and uh, so many companies do whenever we're doing long form theater. Ken, uh, you wanna say a couple of things about what Synergy is doing uh, now? Yeah, sure thing, thank you so much. We're located out here in California. Synergy Theater produces full length improvised plays. During COVID, we're doing that on the internet. So over our YouTube channel and our Facebook page every Thursday at six o'clock Pacific time in the evening and every Friday at seven o'clock. Plus we have online improv classes. If anybody wants to give it a try, go to synergytheater.com and you can find out all about it. That's so great, Ken. Uh, now, uh, um, if Ken, if you want to just turn your video off and uh, relax for a bit, let's introduce the next one, Kat. The next playwright is your partner and co-founder of Freestyle Repertory Theater. It's the executive director. He is the executive director and a teacher and a performer, Mr. Michael Durkin. 
He also works in New York City as an actor in scripted theater. Uh, Mike, do you want to tell us a little bit more about Freestyle Rep? Try turning on the microphone first. You're just giving us an excuse to say that thing that has to be said in every Zoom yeah. meeting. Yeah, well, right. just a, it's really just a reminder to all the audience. Um, the Freestyle Rep has uh, been around uh, uh, almost 40 years now. Uh, Freestyle Rep for 30 years, but uh, the group of people who put it together started back in the 80s, early 80s, mm -hmm. when uh, improv was uh, somewhat unknown. Um, and uh, we're now uh, so happy to be with all of you out there. And, uh, um, and that's about all I have to say, because I sense you're not getting a lot of what I'm saying anyway. We get it. You sound great. Are we all honest to God? Honest to God. But go away oh, anyway. Oh, 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 I'm in the laundry room. So, you know, Excellent. doing my laundry. Doing all great. right. Okay. Um, we, another member of our company from Freestyle Repertory Theater uh, is Laura Valpy. Um, also known, oh, there she is, yeah, Laura Valpy. Uh, she began her improv career in Seattle with unexpected productions uh, at the Market Theater, and she's been performing with Freestyle Rep since 2001, uh, doing a lot of, as if you were in the uh, beginning chats with us, uh, doing a lot of children's shows, so much so that she can't believe that she can sleep past about 5.30 in the morning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, when we're not doing so many children's shows, we're doing online shows and uh, 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 and making all those adjustments. She's also a playwright, and uh, her play, Where's the Baby? Parenting in Pieces, uh, just recently received a stage uh, reading at the Barrow Group. Hey, Laura, how are you doing? I'm pretty good, Laura. How are you? Hey, Kat. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Did you go out and do the... Seven o'clock uh, cheer for the uh, essential workers tonight in New yeah, York. Yeah, and though it's dwindling, and I have a feeling that our street is the only one still doing it. <laughs> um, my husband makes quite a show of himself singing. He keeps adding to the like the the repertoire of every night he sings certain things and it just gets longer and longer. So I notice that the neighbors come out and they're like looking our way and they're just like, Let's see what what's up happening up there at this point. Um, but really, the best part is when the kids scream at the top of their lungs, try to join in. So that's fine. I was going to I was going to say that Laura has uh, two small children, and yeah. when you've been uh, staying at home for a long time in a in a in an apartment, letting the kids scream regularly is really important. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Thank you. All right. See you soon. Next, we have Lisa Thompson, who has been writing in the Monday Night Playgrounds Bay Area's company during the 29-2020 season. And her short play, Strike Home, received a stage reading at Berkeley Rep. So for those of you who know the Bay Area, those are fancy schmancy playwriting <laughs> credentials. Uh, she is also an improviser, Synergy um, Connections. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. My parents are here visiting and they're in the other room oh, cool. watching. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. That's great. How are you breathing? <laughs> you have air yeah, no, it's, it's a little smoky today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are delighted that you are here with us. Yes, indeed. Happy to be here. Thanks, Lisa. Our next playwright is your partner, Kat Coppett, uh, with Mopco up in Schenectady. He's the founder of the Mop and Bucket Company and uh, co-director with Kat. And he began his improv career, as I understand it, in New York City with the venerable David Shepard. This is Michael Burns. And oh. he also has written a book called First You Sit on the Floor, A Guide to Developing a Youth Theater Troupe. Michael, it's great to have you. You want to say a Thank word you. about you want to say a word about what uh, Mopco is doing uh, while we're all uh, social yeah. distancing? Sure, we are. Uh, we're performing on Friday and Saturday nights. Currently, on Friday nights, we're doing a, a game show called Pop Quiz, and on Saturday nights, we're improvising a blockbuster movie. Um, and uh, I'm working hard to get uh, increased filtration and uh, air scrubbing in our theaters so we can start having small group uh, classes and rehearsals take place on site um, with trepidation, but uh, we got to move forward, right? So 
uh, absolutely that's keeping true. Us, uh, pretty busy. All right, cool. Um, Kat, yes. why don't we bring the playwrights back and ask the audience now, if you haven't already, to turn on your chat function because we're going to be asking a couple of uh, for a couple of suggestions. Yes, we will. All right, so playwrights, get ready. We're going to do this if I can do it correctly in the order that you were introduced. So. Uh, Ken, would you please ask the audience for a suggestion to inspire your play? Yes, all right. I have a two-part suggestion that I'm going to ask for. So I'm going to ask for the opening line of dialogue of my play and the closing line of dialogue for my play. And then I will write a play that will go from line one to the last line. So first, um, any arbitrary line of dialogue that one character might say to another. Um, all right, and I heard, I see the first one right up there is, I thought I told you to eat that slowly. So I'm gonna take that <laughs> one. I thought I told you to eat that slowly. And now I need a completely unrelated line of dialogue. Something that in your mind has absolutely no connection to, I thought I told you to eat that slowly. So go ahead and somebody put up a, one more or two more lines of dialogue. Let's see, okay. How about, how the hell can it get this hot? How Excellent. the hell can it get this hot? All sure. right, I will start my play with, I thought I told you to eat that slowly. And I will end my play with, how the hell can it get this hot? Thank you so much. Fantastic. Uh, and next, can Mr. Mike Durkin, would you get a suggestion please? Yeah, I would like a weather condition. That's all. A weather condition. Weather condition, please. And now I'll look. Uh, I got uh, uh, foggy is what I saw. Foggy is a popular choice. Thank it's, you very much. All right. Laura. I would like a specific setting. A specific setting? Mm -hmm. Play could take place in a setting. I'll look like play. this. I'll look like this in a moment. I'll look at the chat. Pal <laughs> Palisades. Palisades. Very nice. No, and Lisa, what is the suggestion you would like for you? I would also like a location, but one in which you might meet somebody you were blackmailing. <laughs> a location you would meet someone you were blackmailing. And uh, look, and a laundromat. A laundromat. Where I noticed some of similar locations were, were given twice. So there you go. Um, very nice. And finally, Mr. Michael Burns. Yes. Uh, three things that you can see from where you are right now without any uh, special effort. Uh, three things you can see from where you are right now. And I guess you can take all three from one person or you could mix and match, whichever you like. All right, I, oh, it's always choice. Choice is the difficult thing. Uh, but one of the very first ones uh, that came in was vitamins, cat, wig. Vitamins, cat, and wig. wig. All right, so are we reviewing our suggestions before you go away or, or are we sending- Let's do that. Let's have a quick review. What do you have, Ken? Um, oh, does Michael Durkin have a- Let's like yes, I one. Okay, um, so here we go. Uh, my opening line of dialogue is, I thought I told you to eat that slowly. And my closing line of dialogue is, how the hell can it get this hot? My uh, suggestion was foggy, the weather condition foggy. Right. My suggestion, uh, the location is um, Palisades. And mine, on the other hand, is laundromat. I have vitamins, cat, wig. <laughs> right. And they've skipped town, Laura. All right, writers. We're going to uh, start the countdown. And um, I'm hoping, Kat, that you can do that because with my big switcheroo at the beginning of the show. I can. I have lost the use of my cell phone. I can, in fact, do that. All right, so writers, 
Remember to keep an eye on your cell phone, which is very important. It's going to be terrible that I've lost the use of mine. We'll see how I live through this evening uh, because that's when we'll send you uh, updates on how much time you have left as well as more suggestions from our audience. And remember, it's improv. Whatever you write is right. So get on your marks, get set, and write away. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, so uh, while our, our, we're going to invite, uh, of course, all of our writers to turn their sound down and their uh, their audio off and their uh, they all have their cameras off. And we would like to invite our audience members to turn their cameras back on and come and join us. Um, just want to give you a, a, a reminder, especially if you're just joining us, that this is streaming on YouTube and on um, Facebook. So um, if you don't want to be on YouTube or Facebook, still uh, hang out with us, uh, but feel free to, um, to keep your camera off and your, your audio off if you like to. Um, so you ready, Kat? Yes. You ready for this? Uh, for the yeah. for the theater games. Um, the theater games. Now, um, I suggest that you have a pencil and a piece of paper, because it's kind of the easiest way to do our our writing games. Unless you're very adept, as some people are getting, at having Zoom on and you know another screen on with another program, um, and um, if you're New to improv or haven't done it for a while, or even if you just did it this morning, I think we can all stand a reminder that in improvisational theater, uh, we agree with everything. The answer to everything is yes, uh, and everything you you write is absolutely correct. And in uh, when we're doing improv writing, a really key thing is you say yes to your own first idea. Um, and so, uh, what we're saying is if you have an idea, slap it down on that paper and it's absolutely right. So Ken always has us go like this before we start. Just a little uh, warming up the hands since we have to use those uh, more than anything else. And um, grab that paper and that writing implement. Uh, and we have a couple of just silly, I mean, all, the, all that we're doing is absolutely uh, throwaway theater, but these are, are even sillier than usual. Um, this one is for spontaneity. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to say a word, uh, and you write the opposite of that word. Um, and uh, so if I said rocking chair, you would say whatever the opposite of rocking chair is and whatever popped into your mind, that is absolutely the correct thing to be saying, to be writing down. Um, so, you all ready? This is a pencil in case people haven't seen them for a long time. <laughs> um, all right, here we go. Coffee mug. Eagle. Lamp. Vampire. Shoe. Silver. Flat. Desk. That's it. If you managed to write a word down for every one of those, you're absolutely right. If you didn't, you're still right. Uh, and I think it would be fun. Kat, what do you think of this? Let's hear somebody read theirs. Uh, if you want to read yours okay. just for fun to see the different things that come up, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll read the word and you tell us what the word was you came up with as the opposite. Uh, I see that Taj Baker uh, is volunteering and has her microphone on. So here we go. You ready, Taj? Sure. Coffee. Here we go. Coffee mug. Cereal bowl. 
Eagle. Blowfish. <laughs> Lamp. Midnight. Vampire. Angel. Shoe. I heard cute, so I said ugly. Okay. <laughs> um, silver. Gold. Flat. Round. D desk. Grass. Ooh. Awesome. Nice. Nice. Anyone else? Uh, I see Jennifer uh, Lavinar. Uh, if you turn your microphone on, Jennifer. Okay, I was nope. actually just cheering for a touch, but okay, <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> way, way to make me look good, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Coffee mug. Coffee pot. Eagle. Ostrich. Uh, lamp. Darkness, which was like midnight. Mm, vampire. Ghost. Shoe. I heard, is it shoe? That's what I said, but. Well, that's what. Go ahead. So the opposite, my opposite for shoe was hat. Silver. Lead. Flat. Bumpy. Uh, desk. Space. Cool, cool. Uh, is there one more person who wants to go? Because I did see Patty Stiles shake her hands. Oh, Ed! There you go. Uh, your, just turn yep. your microphone on. Here we go. You ready? Yep. Coffee mug. Drink glass. Eagle. Finch. <laughs> Lamp. Match. Vampire. Nerd. Shoe. The letter C. Uh huh. <laughs> Absolutely. I knew that. Silver. Gold. Flat. Bubble. Desk. Level. All right. All right. Perfect. Absolutely right. Um, cool. Let's do another one, Kat. You got one ready for us? I do. All right. So this time, uh, I'm going to give you a word and you're going to use that word as a metaphor. You're going to say that word symbolizes whatever or is a metaphor for whatever. So for example, if the word were pizza box, you might say a pizza box symbolizes the uh, bad taste of American, of America or the universal ease with which food can be carried around the world or um, the uh, ease with which, well, you know, whatever, it doesn't have to be good. Uh, or if we said uh, sunrise, you could say sunrise symbolizes the hope of the new dawning day, whatever comes to mind. Got it? All right. So, and we'll give you a little bit more time than we did the last time. So, I don't know, 15, 30 seconds every, every word. Yeah. All right. So, here we go. Your first word is envelope. Did you say envelope? Yes. Your next word is nail polish. Puppy.
avocado. Staircase. And lollipop. I'm looking forward to hearing some of these. <laughs> Who wants to share? All right. Who wants to share? Why not? Do you need me to read the words or do you just want to go down and read them yourself? Uh, either. I've written them down, so whichever yeah, you want to be. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, envelope is the carrier of future hopes and dreams. <gasps> Nail polish is the glossy lies over truth. Puppy symbolizes wonder, hope, and purity. Avocado, the strength hidden within our true self, uh, which is the seed, the pip. Ah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> staircase symbolizes our life journey of either enlightenment or destruction, depending if you're going up or down. And lollipop is fantasy and our need for illusion. Ah, very nice, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Who else wants to go? I'll, I'll okay. go. Excellent. Uh, could you read the words? Sure. Envelope. The ability to cancel subscriptions. <laughs> <laughs> Nail polish. The post MTV generation. Puppy. The ability to reproduce cuteness. Aw, avocado. The dip, the dip inside every hard shell. <laughs> <Your case. laughs> <laughs> uh, the multiplicity of levels. And lollipop. P.T. Barnum's reign continues. Ah, <laughs> lovely. Fantastic. Anybody else? I love how different they are. It's one of the things that makes me so delighted. Eliza, are you, oh, oh. do you actually want to or is Ed just volunteering you? Oh, I'll go. That's real. Excellent. And I see your hand too, Stacy. so you can be next. Sorry. Right. Go ahead, Eliza. Okay. An envelope is a promise to the one waiting to hear from you. Nail polish is a powdered wig on a parliament speaker. Sure. A puppy is a smile for the world. An avocado is the difficulty of finally getting to the good part. A staircase is a road to nowhere. A lollipop is a false promise. Oh, lovely. Stacy, can we hear from you? Okay. Um, I forgot what, I didn't write down the, what they I'll, were. I'll give but... you the words, okay? Okay. Envelope. Um, carry me away to another place. Nail polish. Hard, solid, and smelly, but so beautiful. <laughs> Puppy. Love, kisses, cuddles, and always there for you. Avocado. Squishy, green, slimy. However, I like to chip away at it. Mm -hmm. Staircase. Going up to a place unknown. And lollipop. Cherry sweet and many licks to the center. Yum. Yay. Very nice. Very nice. Um, Kat, let's send a, uh, we're going to periodically, while the writers are writing, uh, text them a suggestion that they have to immediately incorporate into their script. And Kat, yeah. um, since my cell phone won't turn on unless I yes. have a, a way to plug it in, um, the way we've been doing it is if you could text them how much time they have left, that 
hopefully pops up and warns them that they're about to get a, a suggestion. Yep. Um, and since we've been doing um, uh, metaphors, I would like for someone to uh, go into, I, or all of you, go into chat and suggest an object that all the writers now have to use as a metaphor for something. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I, I think cat. Yeah. Oh, oh man, stuff is coming on here. But I think a wolf-headed walking stick cries out to be a metaphor for something. So. Um, just to be completely transparent, my um, my timer stopped, so I'm going to tell them they have 35 minutes because I think we've been going for about 10. Does that seem right? Okay. Yeah, people right. are nodding. Unless they have their own timers on and they're going to know that it's not exact, but I'm going to say that's about right. So I'll okay. say you have 35 minutes and a somewhat, there's a wolf headed Walking stick. Walking to a yeah. wolf. I, although, Ray, I happen to know that Mike Durkin is looking at an ironing board right now. So that would have been, that would have been a real inspiration to him. Okay. All right. Um, uh, for those who've been, been um, doing these writing exercises with us, doing right-of-ways with us, um, we, we've never had... Um, our participants write a setting description. And uh, so Kat and I thought, well, let's do that this time. Um, and here's the kind of twist we'd like to put on it. Um, uh, that you'll have a setting and then you will also have a, a mood or a feeling. And you know how um, Shakespeare does this, but also um, I think like, um, uh, Kat was laughing about how much it happens in Jane Eyre, how the setting describes the mood. Um, so for instance, if my setting was a farm and my mood was greed, I might um, describe a field of corn that wasn't ripe yet, but we're gonna harvest it anyway because we can't wait to sell it. Or there's a, uh, the pigs. Uh, in their trough, fighting each other for the food. So the, the description of the farm would be a way of describing uh, greed. Does that make sense? Was that clear, Cat Coppet? I know you'll tell me honestly. I, I think it was clear, but I knew what you were trying to say. So I'm probably the last person who can tell you. Did Does that make sense? I see thumbs up, thumbs up, if it, nods. Excellent. If it doesn't make sense, just guess at what I meant and you will be right. There is no you wrong will be right. Um, so you may already have a setting in mind, but if you don't, I'll give you three to choose from. Um, a forest, a city street, or a suburban lawn. Uh, so pick one of those right away, whichever one you picked was right. And you may have already picked a mood, but if you haven't, here's three to choose from. Foreboding, cheerfulness, melancholy. So whichever you, to the setting or the mood you picked is absolutely right. And this one, we're going to let you write for, I'm going to say about 30 seconds. Uh, it'll actually be longer than that, but I'll give you some prompts as you're going along. So ready? Go. About 30 seconds. Uh, it'll be If you haven't already, describe the smell of the place.
if you haven't already, bring in a sound. And my last suggestion is, if you haven't already, the time of day and or the time of year. And take just about 15 more seconds to finish up if you haven't already. And that's five more seconds before we stop the creativity. Okay, cool. Hey, Kat, how much time do they have out there? Um, I think it, they have like 27 minutes. Should we send a second suggestion now and then read? And then Yeah, let's send a second suggestion. Um, how about um, how, somebody suggests a, a sound that they hear in their uh, one of their characters. Uh, put it in the, in the chat here so we can hear from people that may not be on screen, a sound that's going to be important now. Clanking. All right. Clanking is the first thing I saw. Ooh, these are so Ooh, good. They are good. Crunching yeah. dry leaves, air conditioning, hoot of an owl. Why don't we go with that old improv trope of going with the first one, yeah, clanking. Yeah, right. okay. Yeah. It's also, open for good interpretation of in various ways. Oh wait, you have I have to give them the time first, right? All right. So while Kat is getting that suggestion fired off, I am dying to hear some of these uh, setting descriptions. Uh, so I heard somebody speak. Uh, I'll go. I'm Sandy. All right, Sandy. Uh, do we see? Go ahead, Sandy. Okay. The setting is a mini turreted castle. Uh, the, uh, was it a motion or? The emotion is melancholy. Uh -huh. the, bubbling the bubbling stream passing under the bridge is made from the maiden's tears. Dankness surrounds her hidden desires. The month is November and each of the trees near the stream have lost their leaves. Wow. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I just, uh, I can't tell you what a relief it is to have melancholy described right now. So yeah. that was cool. Thank you. <laughs> like a Thank little you. It was fun. <laughs> Who else wants to read? Um, uh, I see Karen uh, volunteering, then I see Taj volunteering. If you're not on screen and you would just like to speak up, uh, let us know as well. So let's have, uh, let's have Karen and then Taj, and then we'll see who else wants to go. 
Okay, I had the uh, I picked uh, forest and foreboding. So the dark hung heavy in the air, not a breeze stirred, so st strangely silent and still. The faint smell of decaying flesh radiated from the earth. A lone distant owl called to its mate who would never return. The leaves and debris littered the floor, forest floor like a mourner's shawl. Not a star or, or sliver of moon revealed itself on that night. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, I'm gonna clap. <laughs> Nice. I think maybe someone else should go because mine's very similar to Karen's. I don't care. I'll hear it again. It was just after sunrise. The sky was barely visible through the thick canopy. Not a sound could be heard. Where were all the birds? The wind had dropped. Stillness. The smell of burning leaves and flesh permeated the place. A loud crack broke the silence. Then nothing. The dry leaves seem to shiver in anticipation. Wow. Wow. Similar yet totally different. Thank you. Okay. Let me just see if I can look around for people who are volunteering. Jason. Who would can go? Mm. Um, yeah, I didn't get the memo on the burning flesh. Sorry. I'm, I'm <laughs> <different>. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it was a suburban lawn and uh, melancholy. I said, as the sun set on a hot summer day and the hum of the lawnmower blade came to a grinding halt, that humid stale smell of the overgrown grass and weeds on Joe's suburban lawn reminded him of just how much the melancholy had taken root over his life. Nice. Oh, poor Joe. Yeah, Joe's yeah. feeling it today. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have a lot of people going for cheerfulness. Uh, Jennifer. And then right. I did go for cheerfulness. I did city street cheerfulness. Uh, we see a city street, it's 3 a.m. The street is deserted except for a stray cat. It's been raining, but is now just drizzling. It smells like fresh rain and bread baking behind the brick walls of the bakery. You can hear the sound of footsteps slapping on wet pavement. A woman hums to herself a romantic tune as she walks. It's high spring, cherry blossom petals pepper the sidewalk with pink, a horn honks in the distance. Aha. Uh -huh. Yay. Thank you. Yeah. Ray? Yeah, so I chose forest and cheerful. Uh, so walking through the autumn woods, I hope that the recent rain would be enough to give the wild mushrooms that final incentive to grow. The damp air was promising, and as I paused to get my bearing, I spotted a yellow patch in the distance. I walked towards the patch, my feet squelching in the mud. I was getting giddy with excitement. It was a patch of chanterelle stretching into the distance. How was I going to get the damn things home? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, right. Are there a, uh, uh, are there people that we don't see who would like to to read what they wrote? If so, I'm gonna look at chat, or you can just start talking to me right now. All right. Anyone else? This is. Oh, okay, Cat. All right. Let's let's send them another suggestion. Okie doke. Uh, how about a line of dialogue? Yeah. A line of dialogue. Maybe an emotional line of dialogue. Something. something. really like I sort of like save me all like right save me I I totally like save me okay it feels like it's both generic and enough of an offer to have to be 
All right. You're so kind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving them wolf headed walking sticks and you're giving well, it them. It feels like it has enough of a punch to like have to be like. Well, that's, that's part of what I love about improv is an offer can be very specific or very open and uh, sort of anywhere in between. And they're getting it all tonight. Okay. Um, all right. Um, while I'm sending this, Ben, do you want to set up the next thing for us? So we're not leaving. Sure. Good. Sure, I will. Um, Autologue with weather. What is this? What? The weather monologue. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this is what we'd like to try. In that last one, it was uh, some of them were descriptive paragraphs and some of them were monologues. And this time we'd like to actually go for a monologue in which uh, uh, the character uh, uh, describes their mood while they're describing the weather. Um, so like, for example, well, my example I'll give as, as something totally different. It's not weather, but say say I was going to describe my mood by describing the dawn. I might say, as I look out on uh, towards the east and I see the rays of sun uh, warm the earth, my heart warms with hope. Or I might say something like, uh, as I see the fiery fingers of the dawn uh, clutch at my throat, I my anger becomes worse. Something like that. So... Um, uh, so that's what we're going to try to do, a monologue that, uh, in which a character describes their mood while describing the weather. Um, is there, if everybody's comfortable with us leaving this totally wide open, speaking of open-ended offers, choose your weather, choose your mood. And if you're not comfortable with that, it's either foggy or frosty, and your mood is suspicious or generous. Ready, go. And I'm going to interpose with the beginning of a sentence. The sentence begins, I have always thought. And now I'm going to interpose with another sentence beginning, which is, now I realize.
and we'll take another 15 seconds to finish up. So just about five seconds more. All right, cool, awesome. The people I can see are just writing away. I just, oh, right away, they're writing away. <laughs> and that's just, that's fabulous. I, I um, When we teach in schools, we teach writing workshops uh, with crazy prompts like this. And, and one of the fun things is uh, hearing the pencils on the desk. And uh, sometimes I have to go, stop, stop writing, stop, stop the creativity, stop, stop, we have to move on. So who's going to read their monologue? I can't wait to hear these, but I will till somebody raises their hand or tells me via chat that, uh, that they would like to do it. Uh, I see Jennifer's hand. Wait, will you read yours, Jennifer? Cool. Cool. Yes. Um, I had always loved snow. That's why I signed up for this gig. I thought it would be heaven. But now, staring at the vast tundra stretching away from me in every direction, I realized for the first time how lonely snow can be. I had always thought the expression, a blanket of snow, conjured up coziness and stark beauty. But for the first time, I feel the blanket smothering me. Now I realize that snow exists to bury us, to erase our footprints, to... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> There is there is the sound. Stop, so I stop. Yes. It's perfect. It's the best. Buried. Thing. Buried it. Cool. Hey Kat, it crosses my mind. How much time do our writers our uh offstage writers have? Well, assuming that I didn't give them too much extra time, they have 12 minutes. But maybe I gave them too much time when I Well, um uh, let's hear let's hear a monologue and then send them a, a suggestion a final suggestion and then we'll hear some more monologues. Excellent. All right, and I think you planned ahead who was going to read next. Did I yes, hear you do that? Yes, I think that? I saw Jonah's hand and then Ed's hand. Okay, cool. Jonah, let's hear it. Okay, <clears throat> I have always thought the rain comes slowly at first, a, a warning, a grace period to seek shelter. And so I generally wandered the village without umbrella or rain jacket and generally ignored the weather reports. But the downpour came that day like a freight train from the sky down upon me. And the cold was more than a slap, more like a first kiss or, or a last rite. Now I realize why trees on the hilltops have the deepest roots. Very nice, very nice. Um, I have to say that as I'm listening tonight, I am intrigued to read more by the writers that are sharing right? with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, Got some yes, ringers so cool. in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kat, we promised that we would send another suggestion yes. out. If you, um, so let's see, what kind of thing haven't we done? And if this, felt, this is the last suggestion that we're sending? This will be the last suggestion. Um, so I think I'm going to ask for, um, hmm. oh, I would like to hear them sing a song. <laughs> Somebody sings a song. And uh, so I'll take a suggestion of a style of music or a particular song. Um, all right. I got um, <laughs> I'm going to go once again with the classic first suggestion. They sing a sea shanty. <laughs> oh, God. 
I'm so glad we were nice with the line of dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're going to know who whose suggestion is which? <laughs> this is a this is a Livingston suggestion. This is right. a, a cop it. You know. um, <laughs> okay, so theoretically, according to my um, wrong timer, they have nine minutes and thirty seconds. Should I give them nine full minutes left, or should I say you have five minutes left? Eight minutes? That's how many they actually have. Someone's actually timing, and they have eight minutes left. All right, yeah. tell them they, tell them they have seven because it's going to take you a minute. Okay, uh, you. Um, All right. So, Ray, you're on. Let's hear the monologue. He's stunned. No, I think it was Ed. Oh, it was Ed. Okay. Thanks. He's stunned. Okay. Um, I've always thought that nice weather matched my mood, but the cumulus clouds belied the horrible time I just had. Cool breeze, puffy clouds, and plenty of intermittent sunshine could not penetrate the cold, dark mood that I found myself in. Now I realize that I cannot even hope for a nimbus, mammatus, or other surly cloud to match my dark, dark mood. Okay. Nice. Fantastic. Very, very nice. Uh, Kat, why don't you look for raised hands and I'm going to look for a chat here to see if somebody is going to read to us. You know you want to. Yeah. Can I just ask, because I, I yeah. think I blanked this. Did you give us the line I always thought? Yes. Cool. Because so I was going, oh, we're all using that line. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. Group mine. <laughs> I think by having a question, Patty, you just volunteered. Is that cool with you? Sure. Uh, awesome. Hmm. I always loved the smell of frost, how it tingles and tickles your nose hairs. I'd always thought about the first smell of winter as a sign of the long cold lockdown, the feeling of depression that would slowly come in like the frost on the ground, my skin would tense, my hopes would wave. I would feel this wave of depression sweep over and I would begin my mental hibernation. Now I realize that my prep was not hiding, but surviving. It wasn't running, but healing. It was rest. I was always suspicious and now I embraced. Very nice. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. And Sandy will read for us. Oh, fantastic. Are you ready, Sandy? We don't see or hear you, but if you're there. Okay, I'm reading Hi. away and I'm muted. Okay. <laughs> now we hear you. On this smoke-filled, windy day, my feelings jitter about like a kite that's been pulled from the child's grip. Emotions skitter from somewhat all right to blatant, I can't keep doing this. I have always thought of myself as calm, cool, collected, not. Now I realize I'm more like that kite. I must escape confinement. Uh. Nice. The poet. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Snap, snap, snap. <laughs> Karen. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, I cautiously opened the front door and stepped out on the icy porch. I'd always thought that people were up to, up to no good exited by their back door. My breath hung around me and circled my body, hiding it from the view of prying eyes. Soon it will begin to snow. I can tell this from the murky, watery, deceptive sky. Now I realize that someone is flying over ahead in a, in a plane trying to see my every move. They recklessly fly in the menacing sleet that began to fall. Ah, nice, thank you. So I picked happy and um, uh, meadow. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Excellent. 
Excellent. How much time do our writers have left, Kat? Uh, they have approximately three minutes left. All right. Um, um, here's how I would like to, we always like to end with some kind of group thing, and it's usually this one. I was trying to think of another group thing, but I always like this one. Everybody pick something that you haven't read yet. Uh, it could be clear back to the first, uh, the first exercise we did of the uh, opposites or anything else. And just to get it out there in the universe, everybody read that piece. Turn your, turn your microphones on, everybody. And everybody read that unread piece right now. Go. I kept my place Yay. on the tree by hugging it. The trunk was already swaying in the autumn wind. Wow. You know what, Kat? That's kind of like the beginning of It's a Wonderful Life. It's kind of like the beginning of It's a Wonderful Life. And I couldn't help but hear one phrase at the end. And I maybe it's against the rules, but I sort of want to say it. What was and it? Can I say your last sentence? I think it was you, Jen. Jennifer. Oh, the I lollipop? Heard, yes. Can I say it? Do you mind? Yeah. <laughs> I heard blah, 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 blah. And a lollipop is a universal reward for bravery. <laughs> <laughs> it also crossed my mind. On everything. <laughs> it crossed my mind, Kat, that you and I are the only real uh, uh, audience members of that piece. I know. We sit here and listen perfect. to it all. It so perfect. thank you, everyone, for thank doing that for us. Great. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. You're say, you and I are the only wimps in the whole evening who haven't actually <laughs> done any work or created any. The only thing I wrote down was the list of words I said that people <laughs> had to write the opposites of. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, let's see. Uh, according to my, uh, according to my timer, they've got one more minute, but Jonah's keeping better time than I am. So, how much time do you think they have? Um, they're going to be done in 10, 9, 8, okay. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ah. I think they're done. I don't know. What do you All think? Right. Uh, time's up. <laughs> time's up. Sometimes it takes us a while to get through to them. They're so sequestered. So there we go. So I sent them a text saying, come on back and we'll see what happens. All right. Okay. Every, um, so oh, uh, first act, uh, yeah, first act, act participants, if you could uh, turn your camera off so that uh, Kat and I can uh, better see when the writers come back and which ones we're missing. We got Ken back. Excellent. Uh, I can always go knock on the door and get Mike back. I could go downstairs and get Michael back or shout downstairs. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll be, I, shall I do that? I'll go see if I can. All right. Can you go get one of the writers. Oh, I got Durkin back already. Excellent. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. I can't hear anybody. Well, we can hear you. Did you Why notice when Kat anybody? left? Oh, I know. I she, turned my sound off. When Kat left and she walked, she walked through her virtual screen and it actually looked like she walked into the door of the building. It was very cool. Oh, she's the next Supreme Court Justice. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Watch <laughs> when she comes back if it looks like she walks through the door. There's Sorry, Michael Burns. I was getting beach balls when I tried to save. Nightmare. Yeah, I'm here in the same. Now I can't hear. Oh, goodness. Uh, 
And you're not the last one back. Oh, here's Lisa. Excellent. How did it go, Lisa? It was so nice. I really had a good experience and I was so caught up that I did yeah, miss that last now. text. <laughs> yes, we can hear you, Michael. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, welcome back, uh, writers. We are about to send the audience off if they haven't already taken off for just a bit, but I'm going to say it's a, officially a 10 minute intermission. Uh, so, Kat, I think that means that we'll be back at um, 5, 10. At 34 uh, past the hour. 34 minutes past of whatever hour you're at. Um, but we're not letting the playwrights go, Michael Burns. Playwrights have a lot of work to do here. Um, <laughs> My audio is just going to be honest. All right. <laughs> Now the sound is weird, Michael Burns. So um, uh, let's uh, let's get those scripts emailed to each other. And if you have a moment during your emailing, if you could give people a heads up, who is reading your script? I, I already emailed mine. Mine is called Monster and... Lisa Thompson is reading The Woman, Valpy is reading The Monster, and Laura Livingston is reading Sister. Okay. I can uh, tell you my cast as well. Uh, I'm having a hell of a try. Uh, I don't know this computer. I can't save anything. I'm petrified that I'm going to lose my play. I'll um I'll come do that, Mike. I used that computer last time. Okay. Am I in anyone else's script? You're not in mine. I, I'm not hearing you, Lisa. Did you say no? Sorry, I was on on email. Uh, uh, you are in my script. You and okay. Ken. Okay. Let me come uh, uh, see if I can uh, email Mike's script. Um, I can tell you my cast. Um, I would like Lisa and Kat to read mine. I am going to title mine A Flowing Sea. And uh, Kat, if you would read Amanda. And Lisa, if you would read Joyce. And I'll put that in my email. Can you get mine? Yeah. Hope I'm not anybody else's. Uh, this is just not. Has uh, have has my email come through yes. to anybody? No, you. I can't even find the list. Um, come on now. Do you want to come talk to people? Um, the young fellow from. Uh, from am am I in anybody's play? And I'm, I'm cool if I'm not. I just want to know. I only have women in mind. Okay. Well, no, I'm hurt. <laughs> no, no, no. Jesus, if I can just uh, get this thing easy. In fact, it, I, it's just, it's me and Laura. Livingston and me. We're going to do my play. Okay. Perfect. I didn't know if you had good sound. What's that? I didn't know if you were going to be in a place where you had were being slowed down. You know, we could do it sitting next to each other. Right. We could do that. Um, can I ask if my email has been received? Not yet. And so, where's Michael Burns? He's, he's sitting next to me having computer problems. He's trying to email the script. I'm trying to figure out who is in his play, but I haven't received that information yet. Yeah, okay. there, are three, there are three characters. I'm going to uh, add uh, Kat and Ken and Michael. Um, Ken, Arlo, Michael, uh, Murray, and uh, Kat, Linda. Okay. All right. Uh, Mike, Michael Burke and Murray, right? Yes. You. And I will, hey, you pointed right at me. 
All right, so then I got, I can, no, this is my computer. All right, so. Mm -hmm. has, that, has anybody sent anything out? I have not received a single email yet. I am pressing send right now. You having trouble, Laura Livingston? Can you have sent your play? Yes, I did. I sent it twice, actually. And I received it now. Okay, thank you. The only one I have. Oh, I've now got Valpies. Lisa, I see yours. I see Ken's and Lisa's. Okay. But not Michael, I don't see yours. That's true. Okay. I and I don't see... I don't see mine either, but I, that's that's a whole different story. <laughs> okay, so I know I'm in Ken's. Am I in anybody else's that I missed? No. Okay, cool. Then I will be right back. I have received Valpies now. Ah, they're coming in. Okay. And we'll work on the same. I don't know, can we work on the same? Crazy. There we go. Okay. You got mine? Yes. How much time do we have left, Kat? Uh, three minutes. <clears throat> three minutes. So I am in Valpy's play and Mike's play, right? Maybe we couldn't. Oh, I'm back talking to myself. Yeah, I'm talking to you too. Um, so I don't see it here on my laptop. I'm oh, sorry. But, uh, what are you looking for, Mike? I'm looking for my play. Okay, let me see if I can do that. Uh, At the moment, the only I only have two plays, Lisa's and Laura's. Valpies, Lisa's and Valpies. Valpy. And I have. Burns. Okay, I just sent everybody mine. Um, I sent it individually to Kat at first, but. Got it. You got it. Yes, we are getting back on track. <laughs> I'm Murray. Yep. Okay. And I just want to make sure that I'm clear that I'm only in Lisa and Valpy's plays. Uh, you're in mine too, Laura. Uh, uh, oh. I haven't received any of them. Your sister in mine. <laughs> so scary. So Michael, Burns, Laura, Ken, Lisa. So the one that I'm missing is Durkin, but I don't need it, right? Right, right. right. It's going to be Livingston and me. Okay, so there are only five writers. There are only five plays altogether. Uh huh. Okay. I have Laura Valpies now. Then if I don't need Durkins, I have everything I need. Okay. Oh, I have Lisa. I, need... I don't have Ken's yet. I have Ken's in front of me. Are you in Ken's? No. no Laura okay. is in mine. So I can run out there when I when I need to. All right. right. Okay. Okay. I'm in the dark, but I think I'm back. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, I yeah. can hear you. Hey, how about that? Okay. Little added bits of drama. This is such panic time. 
<laughs> what crazy <laughs> idea was this? Um, and hey. Laura Valpy has disappeared. It is, in fact, time. Uh, okay. All right. right. Laura, Laura, do you want to come back out here to do your hosting? Sure. All right. So if our writers want to, to together next to each other. Okay. disappear, we will call you on one at a time. Is that correct? Right. All right. All right. Um, audience members, audience members, come back. Come back to be with us. Uh, excellent. Excellent. It's so great to have you back. I, I hope that all the uh, craziness and running around uh, and stuff was entertaining. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing in this, uh, in the second part here. So uh, I don't know about you, Kat, but I'm gonna be paying for all my laziness in the first act there. Uh, but, cold reading. Yes, freezing cold reading. Mike Durkin, oh, if you could burying us. Yes. Uh, Mike Durkin, if you could turn off your camera. Oh, there away he went. And uh, audience, thank you so much for coming back. Um, I'm, I'm. We're having to trust that you're there now because uh, we've asked you to turn off your, um, your microphones and uh, your cameras and uh, and you know we've been trusting that you're there for since March really because we really haven't been able to see much of our audience. Uh, and thank you, thank you so much for being there. Um, and if you would like to uh, go further in your support of us and uh, make a contribution to one of our theater companies, I'm going to be at some moment when I find a moment typing in our um, our uh, website addresses uh, because uh, the work we do is is free and we're happy to make it free, but it's not entirely free to us to produce it. So we appreciate any little any little bit of a contribution. Uh, that you would like to make. Um, all right, Kat, are we ready? Yes, and uh, we are. Thank you for participating. Thank you for being part of this show and taking all your creative risks. Um, and now let's hear what our playwrights, what they were doing and creating while we were creating here together. Thank as part of that, you were helping them create by giving them suggestions. In fact, let's review the suggestions that we were sending to the playwrights uh, while they were writing. The first suggestion we sent, so all of our playwrights got the same four suggestions that as they were writing in real time. And those suggestions were, uh, the first one was a wolf headed walking stick. The second was a clanking sound was heard. The third one was someone says, save me. And the final suggestion was someone sings a sea shanty. So all four of those suggestions, look for all four of those in all of the plays. And then our playwrights will remind you what their uh, initiating suggestion was that they asked for as they come up to tell us. So our first playwright is Ken Adams. All right, hello everybody, thank you very much. I am just going to open my script. So I have three actors in my script and Lisa, uh, Lisa Thompson, you will play the woman. Uh, Laura Valpy, you will play the monster. And Laura Livingston, you will play sister. And my individual suggestion was a first line of dialogue and a last line of dialogue. So my first line of dialogue was I thought I told you to eat that slowly. And the final line of dialogue was, how the hell can it get this hot? How the hell can it get this hot? And the scene takes place in the woman's living room. And ladies and gentlemen, the world debut of Monster. Uh, Laurie, you can start off screen. You'll enter later on. Uh, All Laurie, right. Laurie, Laurie. Gotcha. Doing my best. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the world debut of Monster. 
I thought I told you to eat that slowly. <laughs> Get real. I'm a monster. I'm 16 feet tall. I weigh 987 pounds. I have a head the size of a large nightstand, and my little pinky finger is as long as a table leg. I'm covered in hair. My teeth are fangs. My eyes are bulb bulbous and googly. My tongue lulls. It lulls. I'm a hideous, fantastic beast. And you think I'm going to listen to you when you tell me to eat my meat slowly? No. And give me more meat. Look, uh, monster, I see that you are here now and that I'm going to have to get used to you. But that's no reason we can't agree upon some sort of polite manners and customs by which we live. I, I was here first, you know. Here first? Here first? Look, the only reason that you were here first is that you've kept me stifled up inside of you for the past 56 years. You think I didn't know that you knew that I was in there? You think I believed you when you pretended not to hear me screaming? When you pretended not to feel me banging my fists and my head against the wall of your psyche trying to get out? Hell, forget trying to get out. How about just trying to get your attention? Just even a nod or a wink or something would have made me feel better, but no. No, you just ignored me and went about your nice little life, didn't you? Well, I'm sorry, monster, but what exactly was I supposed to do? Let you come out at Thanksgiving last year like you wanted to and pick my sister up by the head and fling her out of the window? Yes, you should have let me do that. Right, well, thank goodness that one of us has some common sense. Thank goodness that one of us has the ability to behave like a decent human being and not a... What? You know. Say it. No. Say it. Fine, a monster. <laughs> That's right, a monster. It isn't easy admitting that I was inside of you, is it? Hmm. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore because I'm not inside of you anymore. I'm out. I'm out. And I'm finally going to do all the things that I've been wanting to do for the past 36 years. And starting with that twerp of a sister of yours. Well, you leave him alone. You leave him alone. You leave him alone. Look at you. A pathetic little rag who spends her whole life getting beat up by her older sister and is still chicken to do anything about it. Well, it's out of your hands now, sweetheart. And your sister is good as dead. Oh, no, wait, please. Please. More meat. Eat, eat more meat. And, and please don't hurt my sister. Uh, you're just lucky that I have a weak spot for Brockwurst. Now uh, look, maybe we can sit and reason together. Okay, you're right, you're, you're right. I kept you all pent up inside and, and that, that wasn't fair. But you've got to understand that I had responsibilities here on the outside. I had to hold on a job. A job that you've been stalled in for 26 years? Middle management? My God. I, I had to raise two children. They, they walk all over you. They're both in their late 20s and neither of them have a job. Well, and, and, and I had to keep peace at my mother's house when we went over there for the holidays. Why? Why? Because that's what people do. Fine. But it's not what monsters do. I I'm starting to think that this entire idea of mine to inject myself with gamma radiation enhanced steroids in order to toughen myself up a bit. 
was a big mistake. Well, it's too late because you did it. And now I am going to step into my own. I'm going to put on this tuxedo jacket. I'm going to put on this top hat and I'm going to pick up this wolf headed walking stick and I am going to go out into the world. I'm going to shock people with the in incongruous image of this fancy suit of clothing being worn by a hideous monster. And then when they are at the apex of their dumbfounded confusion, I am going to eat them. And yet perhaps they won't be so surprised to see me like this at all. After all, isn't that what people are? Hideous monsters in a suit of fancy clothing? <laughs> wait, 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 please, you, you can't go out there. You can't just go out there and start eating people. W where will it end? You're, you're always hungry. It never ends. Don't you get it? Don't you see? As soon as I go out there and begin eating people, I'm going to vomit up their monsters. And then there will be more of us and more and more and more until there's nothing in the whole wide world except giant hideous monsters. No, I, I can't let you do that. Why not? <laughs> you don't have a an answer, do you? Of course I do. Fine, then what is it? Well, because we we may just be monsters in a in a fancy suit of clothing, but but maybe that's enough. Maybe just because you're big and ugly and mean and strong and you lurk inside us and you, you try to get out and we don't let you out. Oh, boo hoo, they won't let me out. Well, well, maybe. A clanking sound is heard. Well, maybe that's just fine. Maybe you don't deserve any pity for your pain. Hey, uh, what's that clanking sound? Maybe you deserve to be locked up and hitting away because you're a big jackass. Did you ever think of that? Uh, what's that clanking sound? It's a big freaking chain, you monster! She pulls out a chain and wraps it around the monster. Hey! The monster struggles against the chain. Let me out! Oh, here it comes. Let me out. Boo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. I'm a little monster! Wah, wah, wah! <laughs> Good, yell your freaking head off. <laughs> At last, the monster gives up and slumps in the chair, chained up. Good. And now, I'm going to shrink you down so small that you will once again fit right back inside my psyche, where the world will never hear from you again. You don't know how. It's too late. Is, is it? Well, you'll forgive me for just one moment, monster, as I turn up the thermostat. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm turning up the heat. I'm a scientist, you know, and I know that gamma radiation enhanced steroid monsters are susceptible to extreme heat. You don't think that I would be stupid enough to let you out without understanding the risk involved and having a sound, scientific, grounded backup plan available? Should something go wrong, do you? Hey, it's getting hot in here. Save me! Ha! Forget it. I'm going to raise the temperature to 127 degrees. Exactly the temperature necessary to shrink you back down to a manageable size. Help me. Help me. The monster begins to shrink. No, now you listen to me, monster. You're right. We lock you up and keep you hidden. But that's because you're despicable. And it's not that we're embarrassed to admit that you're a part of us. We know you are. And we even like to celebrate you from time to time. But we also just don't like you very much. And we're human beings. We're people. And we are smart enough and strong enough to keep you in your place. 
not because we're afraid to let you out, but simply because we'd rather not. There, 127 degrees, that ought to do it. The monster shrinks to the size of an apple. The woman picks it up and shoves it into one of her ears. There's a knock at the door. She opens it up and her sister is there. Oh, hello, Jasmine. Hi, uh, what's going on? Nothing. What's up? Mom needs somebody to go over to the house on Sunday and clean up the mess from the old shed that they knocked down. Can you do that? No. Can you go do it? No. You know I can't go on Sundays. Well, why the hell not? What? Nothing. You know what. Just hold on a minute, okay? She exits the room and returns with a large butcher knife. What the hell is that for? I suddenly have a craving for meat. And I feel like singing a sea shanty too. Fifteen sisters in a bloody old heap. Yo ho ho, I cut off her head. What, what, what the hell are you doing? Are you, are you drunk or something? What? Uh, no. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm not drunk. I'm, I'm just kidding around. <laughs> sure, no worries. I'll go over there on Sunday and, and, and I'll, I'll help them out. Okay, good. Jesus, what the hell's wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing. It was just a joke. That was a joke? Well, it wasn't funny, you jackass. And, and why the hell is it so hot in here? Jesus, it's 127 degrees in here. Really? You moron. How the hell can it get this hot? Blackout. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Was so awesome much fun to read. Thank you so very, very much. Thank, Thank you. You can. Yeah. I got to be a monster. I got to be a monster. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That was awesome. Fantastic. Who have we got next, Laura? Um, well, I think that uh, Michael Durkin and I are going to attempt to read a play together, he is setting up his computer right next to mine. I can't imagine that that's going to work all right. Uh, um, Mike, can you get me your script on your computer here? No. Oh, all right. <laughs> so we'll look at the that's, same script here on Mike's computer. That's, that's unfortunately, uh, unfortunately that, that's the problem. All right. Can you give us a reminder of what your suggestion was? Uh, my su my suggestion <sighs> my suggestion was uh, uh, fog, which I'm right in the middle of right now. All right, why don't you plug that back in there? Yeah, I think so, and turn off the audio on this, and we'll just use this microphone here. Sorry, everyone. Okay, here we go. All right. I'm gonna turn on a chat here to see if anybody's telling us they have no idea. Is, there's waiting? a reverb. All right. We hear you, we're just waiting for the suggestion. Okay, oh. here we go. What was your suggestion, Mike? Uh, my, suggest, my suggestion was fog. All right, here we go. Are we getting feedback? No, we're fine. You're all right. Okay, here we go. I think Tom is a jerk. I thought that when we roomed together at CU, I have I thought that every day that I've worked with him, and I think that emphatically right this horrible moment. All right, all right. I think it's time for a little attitude adjustment. You don't know him like I know him. You know him, but I really know him. He's, it's just like him to organize a surprise party for Val on a weeknight, no less, and expect everybody to drive 40 miles to his lake house. Any consideration, Tommy? No, 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 no consideration. 
Chuck, uh, it's Val's 50th birthday. She's gone through a tough year. Brian's death, her husband, her business struggling. The least we can do is make this a little special for her. It's only because of Val that I didn't tell Tom to just forget it. <sighs> Jesus. Jesus, this fog is thick. It's always like this around the lake this time of the year. Tommy boy, he didn't consider that. No, 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 not Tommy boy. We could have we could have had a great party at Lucinda's just a couple of blocks away from the office. Everybody loves Lucinda's. But no, 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 no. Teen man has to have a party uh, in a bog. Chuck, take a breath. Tom is just doing something good for Val. You know, they've been having trouble since Brian. It's a lot to cut through. <sighs> Why did he do it? What, what was going on in his young head? Was it something one of them did or said or, or didn't do or didn't say? This is a, a night to get them back on track. Hey, when you, when you took the car into Greg, did you tell him to check out the wipers and the fluid? The damn wipers are making... Everything worse. I'm, I'm thinking of changing mechanics. Greg should have done a full checkout of the car. Every time we get the car back from him, something else goes wrong. I'm calling him in the morning, and I'm going to give Chuck, him. Can't you just relax and take a breath? We're going to the party, and and you know we'll have some fun. Oh, okay, all right. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. You better put that wolf head's walking. Dick back in the box and put that ribbon thing back on. Are you sure? Are you sure Val is going to, she's not going to be insulted when we give her a, a walking stick, do you? She hikes. She walks every morning. She says it helps her get her mind focused. And she says that she would use a walking stick. So no, she's not going to be insulted. She'll be pleased that I listened to her and remembered that she said that. Okay, okay, you're a listener. I know you said many times that I don't listen. I just hear and I go on the way I was going. Please don't start on the listening hearing diatribe. It was right. Um, it was what I, I thought might be constructive criticism. <laughs> Maybe I thought it, it might be helpful with you and Tom. He's been getting on your nerves a lot lately, and, and I thought... You thought you thought maybe I should start listening to that jackass instead of just hearing his nasal drone? Jesus! God, I almost missed that turn. I can't see a goddamn thing. I swear to God, I'm going to ream out that Greg tomorrow. I'm going to tell him a new one. Slow down a little. This is the dentist fog. I, we're in no hurry if we get there a little late. It's, it's no big deal. I just want to get there. Stay there for the pre required and acceptable amount of time and get the hell out of there and get back home. Chuck, I, I think you have to take a step back. This is a kind of a problem and it's, re, it's affecting the whole family. I'm, I'm doing my best to explain to Telsa that you're having a tough time um, at the office. Chuck, she's 15. She's, she's going through a lot. All girls go through a lot at that age, and, and you're not giving her enough attention. You're not there for her. You're not listening. Huh? Yes, he's not. Here's, here's what I think everybody should be listening to. The front door closing every night at 9 o'clock and my alarm going off at 5. Listen for the goddamn phone calls I'm getting in the middle of the night every time Tom has a, an idea or a concern or some goddamn brilliant notion. That's what I think you and Telsa should be listening to. Chuck, <clears throat> that was the turn to the lake house. You missed the turn, and I wish you would slow down just a bit. You're making me a little nervous. Did you hear that sound? It sounds like some clanking metal sound. Did you did you hear that? No, what was no, that? no, no, I didn't hear that. I wasn't listening. Jesus God, I don't want to break down in the middle of nowhere and have to call Tom to come and get us. Jesus. 
save me. Save me from that humiliation. Are you going to turn around? Yes, yes, I'll turn around. I'll, I'll make a U.E. Jesus, if I knew where I was, I can't see a goddamn thing out there. Goddamn Tom and his stupid ass party. I'll make a, I'll make a U.E. right here. A horrific sound of metal crunching. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. No, oh, and a bottle of rum. Chuck, Chuck, what what are you singing? Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. No, oh, and a bottle of rum. Chuck, 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 are you all right? Chuck, fifteen men. Are you all right, Chuck? Men. Just fifteen men and dead men. D didn't and you hear that horn honking? Fifteen men and a dead man. I guess I wasn't listening. Black Blackly. out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know where I'm going. Am I going back there? Ow. No, neither. <laughs> Chilling. Okay. Oh, excellent. Thank wow. you. Thanks, Ken. All right. Thank you, Mr. Durkin. Our next playwright is uh, Laura Valpy. Laura Valpy. Yay. Thanks. Um, Cat Coppet, I've got you reading in my play, and Lisa Gay Thompson, I've got you as well. Um, to remind everybody what my suggestion was, it was Palisades, um, and I've titled this A Flowing Sea. Um, I'll read the stage directions from off. Let me get my face out of here. And, Laura Valpy, I have a feeling I'm in it. Uh, you are not, but thank you, Laura Livingston. I'm on the screen is what I'm saying. And I I'm see. To so much. Figure out how All to right. get off. <laughs> I have so many we'll things vamp. open. We'll vamp for right now. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. Okay. Here we go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the world premiere of A Flowing Sea. Amanda, about 30, sits alone at a large dining table in a modern and sparsely appointed open floor plan home. It is early evening and the sun setting over the Pacific casts a beautiful and blinding light through the wraparound floor to ceiling windows. There are open eighth grade math books and a calculator at the table. Amanda looks around and Joyce enters. Oh, uh, hi, Mrs. Lee. I is Jimmy okay? He got up so quickly. Thank you for coming by today. You may go now. So we still have 35 minutes left in our session. Jimmy will not be returning to his lesson today. You may go. Oh, I see. Um, oh, okay. I'm sorry for your trouble. Amanda right. gathers her things. Um, uh, just so I understand, what exactly is the problem? What did I do wrong? You told him he could get up, did you not? Well, for a bathroom break, sure. The kid was sitting there like he was being turned into a pretzel. I swear he was turning purple. So I thought if he wanted to. Yes, and uh, now he must take a shower. So you may go. Not to worry, I will pay for the full hour of your time. A shower? Wait, do you make Jimmy take a shower every time he takes a shit? It is a matter of cleanliness and control. I'll thank you to understand our family's ways and not let him get up from his lessons. But your services are no longer needed today. As Amanda gets up to leave, she finds a wolf-headed walking stick among a collection of art and relics from around the world. Amanda picks it up. Please don't touch that. You rich moms are all the same. Excuse me? The pressure you put on your kids. They have to be perfect at everything. Anything less is like poison to you. Jimmy is learning eighth grade math and he's only nine. Look at this place. 
this is not a kid's home. Where are the toys? Does Jimmy ever get to just play? Or is every minute scheduled and controlled and- A clinking sound is heard. Jimmy, what was that? What have you done? Oh, he probably found something to play with. Give me that stick. You really must go now. Or what? Or I'll, I'll see that somehow your precious kid is something other than perfect? That, oh no, he's a kid? Save me. What? What? Save me. From? Myself. This. What you said. Oh. How do I stop? Oh, give me a wet flowish, wet sheet of flowing sea and a wind that follows fast and fill the white rustling sail and bend the gallant mast. What are you doing? I'm singing loudly over a soft and gentle wind. I hear a fair one cry, but give me the roaring breeze and the white waves even high. Singing? singing? Yes, singing something ridiculous. And the white waves even high, my boys. Try it, you'll feel ridiculous and free and loose. And Jimmy will want to come play too, with you. I'll sing with you, come on, let's try it. Joyce takes a deep breath. Blackout, end of play. <laughs> Nicely done, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Very cool. That's great. Nice singing, Kat. Thanks for going for it. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Um, uh, Lisa, I think you're, you're next. I think I am. Um, all right. I'm going to go away for a little bit, and you uh, tell all us right. what's going on here. All right. Well... I believe you will be acting in this play. Uh, you'll be playing Lucy and Ken will be playing Barton. Um, my suggestion was a laundromat. And so the play is set in a laundromat and also called the laundromat for the time being. Um, I'll be reading stage directions if there are any, I can't remember from off stage and um, take it away. The world premiere of laundromat. I like to watch the people go by. Yeah. I have quite an eye for people, you know. Uh, okay. I can tell a lot about a person just by looking at them, seeing how they walk, how they move their heads, if they make eye contact, what they're wearing. Even without all that, I, I just get a feeling about people. My name's Lucy, by the way. Uh, Lucy, my name's Barton. Listen, uh, I don't want to be rude, but uh, I brought this book with me, and I really do need to read it. Oh, sure. I understand, young man. Thanks, ma'am. I know how it is when you're busy and you have a lot going on. What, back when I was a young woman? I did love to read. Never went anywhere without a book. My mother was always telling me, Lucy, get your head out of that book. She thought I'd just up and float away one day on a cloud of words. Hey, Rianne. Did she think um, the words would come out of the book and gather me up in their arms and take me off to the firmament? Or maybe she just thought that books were full of ideas that had nothing to do with earthbound life. I just wrote in 45 minutes. Guess I'll never really know. Yeah. That's something to ponder. I can't read anymore. Look at my eyes. Barton? Look at my eyes. They're cloudy. That's right. Maybe there was something to what my old mother said after all. My head is in the clouds. Oh, ah. Morals is 22nd, down then. 
Yeah, but either one is fine. Tonight is, um, I've got something going on until about 5.30 tomorrow. If you're not in the play, if you could just mute your microphone. Sorry for interrupting. I'm not hosting, so I can't do it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I guess it is. Yes, ma'am. I guess it is. I'm sorry, folks. I have lost the script. Lisa, I'm sorry. That's okay. Shall we start at the top or maybe? Yes, maybe we can do that. Ken, I believe you can mute Sandy as the host, but I cannot. Oh, oh, oh. So he'll be sorry. I'm going to try to do that. Give me one moment, please. <laughs> All right. Um, apologies, everybody. And apologies, Lisa. Why don't we take that over, Laura, from the top? Uh, yeah, give me a little more time here. For those of you who got to watch the reading of The Princess Bride here? the yeah. other night, we are right on track with the, <laughs> <laughs> Truth. the production. We don't want this. And while Laura's looking for her script, do you want to tell us more about what's coming up at Synergy Theater? That's an awesome idea. Thank you very much, Kat. So uh, we perform uh, full-length improvised plays online on YouTube and Facebook. And on Thursday night at 6 o'clock p.m. California time, we are debuting our brand new show, The Improvised Courtroom of Judge Moody, which is in the style of the People's Court or any of those other <laughs> televised courtroom shows. So that's awesome. Um, rehearsals have been a blast. And then on Friday night at seven, we're back with our second installment of the Improvised Museum of Art in which three of us replicate famous paintings with costumes and virtual backgrounds. And it's three paintings hanging in an art museum. And it's what they say to each other when nobody's watching them. So um, Thursday at six and Friday at seven. Fantastic. Excellent. Sounds great. Are you ready? I am ready. I All think. Right. Okay. World premiere of Laundromat. I like to watch the people go by. Yeah. I have quite an eye for people, you know? Uh, okay. I can tell a lot about a person just by looking at them, seeing how they walk, how they move their heads, if they make eye contact, what they're wearing. And even without all that, I, I get a feeling about people. My name's Lucy, by the way. Uh, Lucy, my name's Barton. Uh, listen, uh, I don't want to be rude, but uh, I brought this book with me, and uh, I really do need to read it. Oh, sure. I understand, young man. Thanks, ma'am. I know what it's like when you're busy and you've got a lot going on. What? Back when I was a young woman, I did love to read. I never went anywhere without a book. My mother was always telling me, Lucy, get your head out of that book. She thought I'd just up and float away one day on a cloud of words. I, what did she think? I, the words would come out on the book and just gather me up in their arms and take me off into the firmament? Or, or maybe she just thought that books were full of ideas and had nothing to do with earthbound life. I guess I'll never really know. Under something to ponder. I can't read anymore. Look at my eyes. Barton, look at my eyes. They're cloudy. That's right. Maybe there was something to what my old mother said after all. My head is in the clouds. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I guess it is. Do you know, do you want to know what I see in you as a people reader? I mean, sure. I, I mean, I guess so. I see somebody who wishes he were somebody else. Huh. You're kind, but you don't want people to see that part of you. 
You shroud yourself in aloof indifference, always acting like you're thinking about something so important and different from the rest of us. Whoa. Was that too much? No, no, go on. I want a hair. I don't know what this means, son, but I see you as an old man with a wolf-headed walking stick in your gnarled hand. You're leaning on it, and your face looks, well, I, I don't want to say, but, but you look like you've suffered a tragic blow that has undone you. My God. My, my grandfather had the self-same walking stick you described. He, he left it to my father, but, but someday it will come to me. What do you think happens to me to cause me all that suf suffering countenance? The dryer comes to a stop and makes a loud clinking sound. That's my dryer. I better put in another count coin. Uh, allow me, please. Uh, don't, don't get up. I, I want to hear more. He gets well, up and crosses the dryer. All right, Barton. Thank you. Uh, you were saying? I mean, I, I wish you would say what you see happening to me. Young man, I don't tell fortunes. I, I just say what I see. Barton closes his book and faces the old woman fully for the first time. Everything you said rang true for me. H how did you get so good at reading people? It wasn't always this way. Once my eyes began to go and I wasn't able to see sharply, things I could never see before began to become clear. I guess it's a typical story. When the goddess takes one thing away, she grants another, like a fairy tale. Well, I'm grateful for your second sight, but <laughs> save me. What I see isn't set in stone, you know. There's hope? Always. Another thing my mother taught me. I'm so scared of what's going to happen to me. I've always been afraid. When I began to lose my sight and I knew I couldn't read any longer, I, I was so afraid. But I've found other ways to get stories in my life. I guess that's why I read people instead of books. Oh, yes, I, I can imagine that must have been hard. Yes, I sure did love to read. My mother always told me, I already told you what she said. I do repeat myself sometimes. My bonnie lies over the ocean. My bonnie lies over the sea. What, Lucy, would you mind if I read out loud? Why, yes. I would love that. Well then, let's start at the beginning then. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, <laughs> never minding how long precisely, having little or no money in my purse and nothing particular to interest me on shore, I thought I would sail about a little and see the watery part of the world. Give me your hand. The tragedy has lifted from your face. Keep on reading, son. It is a way I have of driving off the spleen and regulating the circulation. End of play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. I have to say. That was fantastic. I love that. Very, very nice. Very nice. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> Ta-da! All right. Nice to All right. Uh, our final playwright for the evening. And, uh, before we bring him up, or I guess you already have. He's right there. Uh, this is our final playwright. And I would like to say that uh, when we are done here reading, um, we will hang around for a bit if people want to ask us any questions or if, if people, if any of the writers want to discuss with each other, you know, uh, what they went through and all the craziness that goes on backstage. So we'll have a short talk back. Uh, and uh, until then, we will hear the final play of the evening, Michael Burns.
Michael, why don't you remind us what <clears throat> your um, suggestion was? Yes, it was wig, cat, vitamin. Wig, cat, and vitamin. Yes. All right. And so, uh, well, I will read the stage directions, uh, and this will be uh, you right. and and uh, Michael Durkin and Ken. Great. Um, and do you and want... what role? What role am I reading, Michael? Ken, uh, you are reading Arlo. Arlo, thank you. All right, you're not on immediately. And okay. do you, you want... have the script? You, you I do have the script here if you want it. I do, but do you want to? I can read the stage directions. Is there anything else? I was just going to ask if you wanted to be off screen so that. I certainly can do that because that will not corrupt the mise en scène. Here we go. Um, a hotel room, blinding sunlight coming through the window. Murray shuffles in from the bathroom. 50, a touch paunchy, but handsome in a formerly rugged kind of way. He's half dressed. A tie dangles from one hand. A pair of reading glasses threaten to fall off of his forehead. Lindy, hey, Glenda, where'd you go? You're, you're here. Jesus, must be one, two o'clock. Linda! The door to the hotel room opens. Linda enters. She's a female version of Murray. At one glance, we see that they've been together for a long time. Keep your pants on. Or in this case, put your pants on. Jesus, Murray, why aren't you wearing any pants? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm giving them up for Lent. Come on, seriously, and, and cut that out, old goat. Murray has been dramatically and slowly stalking toward Linda, using the tie he still holds as a kind of bullfighter's cape. He stops. I don't think we should go. Of course we should go. Where's my wig? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't, my, turn to, it wasn't my turn to watch it. Seriously, where's my wig? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know nothing, Linda. I don't know nothing. I can't read nothing. I'm just sitting here, Linda. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 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 I don't know. I'm getting my pants on. Vitamin, you, you should... You should have one. You should have one. This is uh, this is a really difficult thing here. Uh, I'm doing my very, very best, Linda. I swear to God I am. But I'm just gonna sit back for just a second here and let things happen. Uh, you should have one. This is a very stressful day. Murray, where is my wig? When I went down to print the speech, it was right here on the bureau. Honest to God, Linda, I haven't touched you. It was yet. right here. I shaved. I found my tie. I considered pants uh, as a cultural phenomenon, but I didn't touch your wig. You sure you don't want a vitamin? If this is one of your jokes, Murray, I, I, I need my wig. I can't accept this award with my real head hair. Seriously. I think your hair is beautiful. Is this a joke? Really? This is, it's one of your jokes. Why did you say we shouldn't go? Why, why do I say anything? I'm trying to get a rise out of you. Uh, did you look under the bed? I, 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 I'll look under the bed. Don't mess up your back. No. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Particularly now when so much that we used to take for granted is crumbling in front of our <laughs> eyes, our political system, our ecosystem, family systems. Murray, you aren't using that damn stick. I don't go anywhere without Wolfie. God, please, Murray, this is important to me. Maybe not to you, but it is to me. I would like us to arrive on time, looking like normal people, with my hair as people expect to see my hair, and my husband just a little bit less odd than he likes to be in public. I would like you to accept the award for Women Ecology Warrior of the Year. And I, I would like to make it all the way through without incident. Can you help make this happen for me? Sans wolf-headed stick, please? need my stick. You don't need your stick. I need it. The stick isn't some affectation. It's not a gag. It's not cutesy clowning. I'm having a hard time walking, Lynn. 
are you talking about? Don't be ridiculous. You can't I'm not that. being ridiculous. I am, in fact, not ridiculous. I am dead serious. I am in need of my stick so that I don't fall down, okay? I mean it. Are you all right? Yes. I just, I just need my damn stick. Well, well then okay. Bring the damn wolf. <laughs> but no howling. No howling, agreed. You know, Lynn, I'm actually very proud of you. Uh, I want this to go well. I want you to look good. No matter what I have said in the past about this award or, or awards in general or, or anything, I love you. Why, Murray Cullen, that was poetic. A loud clanking sound is heard. Knock at the door comes with it. Without seeming at all surprised, Linda opens the door. Arlo, their son, enters with three shovels. About time. Do you have any idea how hard it is to find a shovel in Minneapolis on a Sunday? Yeah, yeah. You do not. It's not easy, old pal of mine. Thank you, Arlo. I know it must have been very difficult. Arlo, one of these is a snow shovel. Yes. I asked you to find three shovels, like dirt shovels, the kind that- I know, Mom, they had two shovels, one snow shovel, and I bribed the maintenance guy to get these. This is it. Besides, it's, it's a metaphor, right? A snow shovel? That's a totally different message. I want to demonstrate the willingness to roll up our sleeves and dig into problems. This is Minnesota. Snow can be a problem. I think it'll go over well. Oh, we, oh, oh, we can make a joke out of it. You, you, you hold up your shovel. You say, we need to literally find the tools we need to dig into the problems we face. And then I'll hold up mine from the back uh, the way we planned it and, and say, hey, yeah, I, I, got a, I got a shovel. Can I help? And then, and then Arlo holds up a snow shovel and he says, uh, I'll, a clear path for both of you. Not bad, not good. Or, or you are the one that clears the path, Linda, because you are the strong, uh, what's it, uh, advocate, right? I like it. So what, what have we here? He's been looking for the wig. He's looking now at the floor of the closet at a spot we can't quite see from the vantage point of the audience. Hello, little mama. Linda, I found the wig, but I can't wear it. Don't be ridiculous. Give me my... She stops dead looking at the same spot. Oh, my. What is it? A cat. She's given birth in your mother's wig. <laughs> Correction. She is giving birth in your mother's wig. Jesus Christ on a bicycle. Really? It, it, it's good luck if a cat gives birth in your wig, you know. Don't be a clown, Arlo. Look who's talking. What am I gonna do? I can't accept the award like this. I look, look at me. What is wrong with the way you look? Save me, sweet God, save me. What's wrong with the way you look? I look like hell. She addresses the mirror. You look like hell, Linda. Not a woman with a balanced life. You look like a survivor of something. Cancer, Nazis, something. You look horrible. Murray stands up, waving the wolf-headed stick in his hands. He sings. What do you do when your hair falls out? Pull, you bastards, pull. What do you do when the kids fall out? Pull, you bastards, pull. And what do you do when you look like hell in Minnesota? In winter, no less. Pull, you bastards, pull on the oars. Grow us out of all this mess. <sighs> I hope that that would be inspirational. You're a sweet man. That's true, Murray. Mom, it's just an award. Women Ecology Warrior of the Year. It's all good. You can't look bad because they care about what you stand for. 
and weird shit is happening more every day. And if you simply tell them you wanted to wear your wig, but a cat snuck into your hotel room and gave birth in your wig, they will love you anyway. And then we'll go home and watch the apocalypse. Okay? Yeah, that is exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, fuck that. What? Ah, I make fun of your work, uh, but you better not stop fighting. No, while we breathe, not while, not while kittens are born in wigs. Why? Because what the hell else are we supposed to do? Curtain. <laughs> that was <Wee>. awesome. <laughs> Nothing topical about that play, no, honey. <laughs> no, it wasn't about that. No, no. Yay! And that, yeah. my friends, is right away. Let's uh, let's bring all the playwrights on, even Michael Durkin, if he's in the within the sound of my voice. And um, I would like to say, as as we're closing. Um, if you can go to our website and uh, drop a couple of bo uh, bucks into one of our hats, either Synergy Theater, Freestyle Repertory Theater, or Motco, who was so well well represented here tonight, we would really appreciate it. I personally am saving up my shekels to buy a computer so that uh, when I'm working with kids in schools remotely, it'll go a lot, <laughs> lot better than this. Um, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, playwrights. Thank you. I am so sorry you don't get to hear what happens in the first act. We had some wonderful, wonderful writing. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We're back next month. Uh, it is uh, on October 19th, and uh, we will be joined with a new playwright that I've not worked with before. Um, uh, and um, oh, you know, I started saying that, and on my printout, I don't have her name here. Well, I hope she's Hi. not watching right now. <laughs> you have to go it's, back and find out. The name yes. of the playwright will be here next time. She's a producer and a writer and actor in New York, and uh, uh, and she uh, is uh, works with the Flea Theater Company. And so you can find out uh, on October nineteenth who our mystery guest is. So we'd like to say good night to everyone who has to leave us now. And uh, the playwrights are gonna stay on for a little bit and uh, decompress, talk to each other. And if you wanna join in on that chat, just uh, pop your, pop your uh, screen back on, come back on your uh, video. And 